Hey SV fam, hey carnivores, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Bella the Steak and Butter Gal. I hope you guys are having a beautiful meat fuel day. I'm inviting on a very popular guest, as you guys can see in the title and the thumbnail, Coach Raymond is coming back on to talk about a very popular question I'm getting these days. It's probably because Steak and Butter Guy has been so adamant about getting that six pack and every time I share it, I get more inquiries about how he's doing, about how his six pack goal is going. You all know that he is being coached by Raymond himself and the results are going well. Uh, so that's why I wanted to focus this video on just how to get closer to the goal of getting abs of six pack. I don't think there's anything wrong on wanting to improve your body, how it looks, right? How you feel in your own skin. So I'm going to be inviting back on coach Raymond to talk about his top five tips to getting abs. All right, without further ado, coach Raymond, welcome. How are you doing? Hi Bella, how are you doing? Thanks for having me on again. Yes, welcome back. I'm very excited about this discussion. Firstly, do you want to open up with your first top tip to getting abs. Yes. Biggest first top tip. Abs are made in the kitchen. Yes, I agree. So if you could talk a little bit about what that kitchen should have food wise. <laughs> in that kitchen food wise, the most important thing to get abs, in my opinion, is to go low carb or no carb carnivore, preferably mainly all meats. Carnivore diet is the best one for the quickest result. If that is what you're looking for, or just a very low carb, high, high meat diet. You want the most nutrient dense, the best muscle building possibilities that you can get and energy that can actually burn off your fat quickest. Mm -hmm. Now, SB guy being young, obviously he can get a six pack pretty quick, but this would be very different for somebody who's 49 like me. Yes. It took me about a year and a half before I started seeing my six pack after going very low carb and also carnivore. Wow. Okay. So very true about the age. I'm glad you brought that up. So steak and butter guy, he's 24. So of course, it's no surprise that in less than two months, I'm already seeing a six pack on him as his girlfriend, you know, looking at his body change. What are your thoughts on those who start carnivore literally just to change their body for aesthetic reasons? What are your thoughts on that? Again, just like you said, there's nothing wrong with that. A uh, lot of people that come around that uh, carnivore look for aesthetic changes. Yeah. But I would say that you're kind of shortchanging yourself. Uh, what happens when you do get that six pack? What do you do then? Yeah. Are you willing to go ahead and just, oh, okay, I got the six pack. All right, I'm going to eat trash again. And guess what will happen? The reverse will happen. You will lose that six pack. Mm -hmm. So if you're going in for that reason, then just, just know that you'll just be able to get that picture and be done with it. I mean, that's fine. If that's what you want, that's what you want. Yeah. Now, if you also want a six pack, and have all the benefits of carnivore, clear mindedness, hardly any joint pain. We're talking about uh, uh, absolute uh, peak physical performance. Then stick around. There is a lot to be gotten than just a physical appearance of carnivore. Yep, absolutely. So with body changes, weight loss, you know, weight goals, those are very temporary goals. And I'm pretty confident you can get there in time. So what happens when you do get to your weight goal, when you do get that six pack? So it becomes a very temporary goal and you suddenly lose purpose of why you want to stay carnivore or keto or ketovore. So by really asking yourself, yes, I want to lose weight, but I also want to gain health. That definitely will recommit yourself to this diet. It definitely helps with keeping you on track long term. And then of course there is that thing where it's like 30 days. I just want to experiment. I'm just curious. I want to see how I feel. I want to see what the results are. So let's talk about the clients that you've worked with who literally had that goal. I just want to lose the 10 pounds and I'm really good to go, right? Have you seen them stay carnivore because they felt so good? Or have you seen them just be like, okay, the goal is met. Adios. I've had uh, both sides of clients. So I've had clients, uh, a young client, Noah, 
He's 18. He went in it for the looks, but he had a bunch of bowel issues, anxiety, all of that. After I worked with him for two months, his wife comes on and she's like, he's a totally different person. You know, he hadn't have had to have his ADHD med. He used to be very anxious about any world stuff. Nowadays, he's not even worried about us moving, which normally that would tear his life apart. Oh, wow. uh, just amazing stories like that. He saw carnivore for a totally different reason. Yes, he did end up getting his six pack, but you know, he kept going. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is he felt that health gain and that he's never felt better in his life. Now I've had the total opposite also. I have a client that I just spoke to today. He keeps wanting to have it for the body image. He refuses to look at the benefits, only the benefits of the health. And he is older. His friends are telling him, hey, we've never seen you look this good. That's great, but that's still not a six pack. So he's like, when am I going to get, why am I doing this? And then he'll fall off and then he'll feel like total crap. And he's like, I, I don't get it. I obviously can't go back there. So he keeps on hopping back, going back both ways and questioning himself when he's on carnivore and questioning himself when he's off. Yeah. So, you know, the problem is, is going to have to be at a point with him. I've told him, look, you've got to commit regardless of your results. You got to commit at a certain point or else you're just making your body a disfavor. You're just going to confuse the crap out of yourself. So true. And this reminds me of Steak and Butter Guy himself because recently he also fell off track and he went into a very bad spiral where he just couldn't climb out of his carb addiction, right? The moment he got a taste of his favorite carbs, which is pasta, by the way, he couldn't stop eating it. So he had like a relapse of almost almost a week long. And after he recovered, he actually told me, oh my gosh, I could not believe how horrible I felt. Because as a separate person from him, me observing him change within just that week, it was incredible to see how different he was, how all of those bad habits came back. And I'm not gonna go into detail because we'll be filming a video just on that and just how he recovered. But it really goes to show that just having that goal of getting a six pack sometimes is not enough, right? Because he felt like he succeeded already. I have this body, right? So that means I'm gonna, you know, reward myself, celebrate with a pasta meal. Mm -hmm. A whole week of just feeling horrible. So your first tip, look at what is in your kitchen. Look at what you are feeding your body. So could you go a little bit more into detail? Does it have to be carnivore? Can it just be a little bit lower carb? What do you think? Again, the definition's not as much there. The stomach's not as flat. Whenever you have vegetables, there's going to be a bloating. Whenever you have starch or whatnot, there's going to be a bloating. So uh, to me, it just makes it easier. And the other issue that I want to say about the lower carbs for me, that was impossible to maintain for six weeks. This is something I'm going to tell you to try to maintain for a year and a half. Yeah. Okay. Not just six weeks on six weeks off. All of those just destroys all of your results that you've worked so hard for. The grind is also the most important part of this. The consistency of this journey is what's important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're all about how to get that six pack and keep it. So let's go on to the second tip, which I know you're all about, which is basically frequency and timing of eating. That's right. Frequency and timing of eating is very key. Now, when I say that, I want people to eat as much as possible and have distance between your eating. In an hour, if you have to eat every three hours, that six pack is going to be very difficult to come on. If you're eating every, say, six hours and the longer you can do it, the better. I have actually been able to really chisel out, chisel out with 48 hours with one meal. That's at the chisel out process. Now, do you have to do that? No, you could actually get a six pack with just OMADs. OMADs meaning one meal a day, one meal, 24 hours, 23 hours, and one hour eating period. So I haven't seen any updated progress pics of you, but do you still have that six pack today? Oh, I do. I do. <laughs> okay. I it doesn't go so. away. Yeah. I and I'm eating two MADs right now. 
Yep, that's why I asked, because Raymond is on a completely new challenge for himself. Until the end of this year, he's going to be doing OMADs and two MADs and then three MADs. Yeah. So it yes. would be great to see his results. Six pack is still there, which is why I have to bring up this. Fasting is not necessarily essential to get that six pack. It's also what you're eating in combination with the frequency of meals. Exactly. So carnivore is really the key. It's uh, saturating your hormones to the point where you eat so much animal nutrient dense food where you just have a long distance of time before you're hungry. It's not torturous. It almost makes it where it's impossible for you to eat uh, that second meal. I don't enjoy eating two meals a day, actually. This is very hard to train myself back to getting to two meals a day. I still have a hard time to try to think how I'm going to do three meals by December, yeah. but that is what I set for myself. And I want to see what happens to my body goals doing that. So I'm letting you know, if I can do this, this is a guy just for my blood work to go 12 hours. I couldn't do back then. Mm -hmm. That's how bad I was at fasting. So it's trainable. Yes. And thanks to coach Raymond for guiding me to where I am today. I can literally do rolling 48s whenever I want to. I'm at a place where I'm so comfortable. I have all of these fasts that I love in my pocket that I can just take out any time I want to feel extra sharp one day. Or I know that I'll be going out on an excursion with family and I'd rather fast. So I know exactly what to feast on and I know exactly how to fast. And I am here today because of Coach Raymond's whole feasting and fasting. We'll touch on this a little bit later in the video if you want to know exactly how to get to this point where you can just fast however you'd like to get to the results. You touched on OMADs, you touched on 48s, you touched on two mads and three mads. Clearly, you can eat whatever you'd like frequency wise, but I think the stress here is on what you're eating. So it goes back to the first tip, right? Yes, it's absolutely. What is in the kitchen? If you eat a nutrient dense diet, you literally are not hungry. If you have a little bit of carbs, there is enough anti-nutrients in that carb that will get you hungrier a little quicker. For me, I like this where I don't have to think about food. I have this freedom where I can just go without food for a while. So yes, the key is carnivore. Awesome. Well, let's go to the next tip, Raymond. What is your third top tip to get closer to abs? Yes. So my third biggest tip is stress relief. Stress is a big holder of fats. Why does it do that? Because of cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone. You stress out, cortisol rises up and it holds on to fat. How does that work evolutionarily? When a time of famine was happening back then, your stress would go up, which would hold on to the fats, which it won't release because that fat is very important for it to survive the famine that's about to come up. So this is why it made sense. Now, the problem in our society right now, we have stress all around us. I'm not saying this part's easy at all. This does take training but train your body to not stress as much as possible. And that will help you release the weight and get that six pack ab. Yeah. And I know as a female, a lot of the stress when our goal is weight loss, a lot of the stress is from ourselves. The amount of pressure we put on ourselves every time we step on that scale. Can you imagine how much stress is added onto our day when we see a number that we're not happy with? So what are yes. some things that people can do today, like actions that they can do today to mitigate those unnecessary stressors? Great question, Bella, because one of the things you can do is throw out that scale. <laughs> that scale is counterintuitive for what your goals are. If you want to replace the scale, replace it with taking a picture. Take a picture once every two weeks. Don't step on that scale. Regardless of your body composition, and I've had some people this happen to, they're like, oh, wow, I'm looking so good. I'm going to weigh myself. And they weigh themselves. They're two pounds more. And they're like, oh, well, this is not worth it. Wait a minute. You just said you looked really good. How did that imply that the scale told you you look bad and that's all that matters? This is why we tell you throw out that scale. That scale has no business to be in your arsenal 
because it can upset you and throw you off your course. And remember, I said, this is a grind. Yes. This is all about consistency. So every time you get depressed and you, you fall back a little bit, it holds you there. And also when the stress level goes up, that holds you there. I understand how difficult it is to be alone in this, especially how crazy and extreme people think the carnivore diet is. So this is why I feel like having accountability buddies, having a coach or having a community can be so incredibly helpful. Yes, actually, this is why I really love the September challenge that is coming up very, very soon. Please join us. This is why we're there for both me, Bella, Coach Steven. We have many coaches that are there to just guide you along, cheer you on. And we have a whole community that will tell their stories and it may relate to yours. You'll start thinking that, hey, I'm not the only one going through the struggle. Yeah. They went through it. I can too. So the community is a strengthener. It makes you feel like you're not the only one in this crazy world that decides to just eat meat. You feel like you don't have to question yourself as much because the community thinks just like you. Absolutely. So these 30 day challenges, uh, they happen every single month. You'll get as much Raymond as you want. You can ask him all of your questions. And then we have coach Steven. He's going to be doing obesity and diabetes meetings. So you have all of these coaches who are there to just help you to get to your goals quicker. So the sign up link is down below in the description box. If you want to read more about it, what this challenge entails, click on that link and read up. All right, Raymond. So let's go to the fourth tip of how to get abs. Don't kill yourself in the gym. Why am I saying that? Don't you need gym workouts to be able to have a six pack? I can tell you, no, it is made in the kitchen. Now, what could be wrong with overworking out? Injuries, lack of consistency. It can kill your diet. It can do a lot of negative things if you overdo it. Now, am I saying gym is not good? No, not at all. Go ahead and work out. I usually tell my clients, hey, at first, for the first month, meanwhile, you're adapting to the diet to make everything else easier on you. Go at a 70% rate on your gym maximum. Don't go over that. Enjoy your gym. So Raymond's whole thing about exercise, it should be fun. You should be doing it because it brings you joy and happiness and excitement to your life, not because you think you have to do it to get to your goal of getting the abs or losing weight. Yeah, I had to learn that the hard way. So I didn't want to do dieting at all. And um, when, when I first found out I was pre-diabetic, I thought I could, they told me I could exercise my way out of it or, you, or diet. So I said, okay, I'll pick exercise. So I exercised, did Orange Theory, which is a high intensity interval training. And I managed to get up to six days a week. What ended up happening after seven months is I looked, I mean, pretty much the same, but I gained like a pound. Okay. And that was so upsetting because for two weeks of going on a low carb diet, I lost 10 pounds, look like I lost 30. Wow. So imagine what would happen if you went all in carnivore and you did Raymond's fasting and feasting protocol. Okay, so this leads us to our last tip. What the heck even is this feasting fasting protocol that everybody is talking about when it comes to Coach Raymond? Can you just uh, give a little lay down? Yes, absolutely. Everybody talks about fasting. The key is in the feast, is in to eating as much meats as possible, stuffing yourself, not eating for pleasure, eating for work until you get to the point where you absolutely cannot put another bite in. Now, I'm not saying just do that and then you're done. There's a priming period. Yes. Okay. There's a point in time where you'll have to do this maybe for two weeks, maybe a week, maybe longer. Depends on where you're at in your journey. And once you get that down, we're ready to fast. Yes. So I'm sure a lot of the viewers are still a little bit confused. Okay, what is priming? What exactly does it mean to feast? How do I know if I feasted properly? How do I know if I'm ready to take the next step? Okay, so what can you offer these people who are so desperate to lose weight, get that six pack? What can you offer them? In September, we are announcing this beta testing of where we're going to get a group 
who are interested in fasting and feasting, and I will lead them through exactly what they need to do. This is going to be a group coaching per se. Now, I don't know what this is going to look like. So I'm going to need community involvement. I'm going to need you to help me to build this where it's successful. So please join us September and we'll be doing this together. Yes. So this is actually a Kickstarter challenge that Raymond is just taking up for himself because he's all about learning how to perfect his whole feasting fasting protocol. He's all about learning new things, how to make it better, how to make it more effective. So by joining joining September, you'll be able to work with him closely in this group fasting program that he's going to be starting. So if you're interested, again, it's the same exact challenge that we talked about earlier in this video. You'll get the Tuesday and Friday community meetings where we just talk about carnivore and anything you're struggling with. And then you'll also get the weekend extra added meeting with Raymond, where it's all about the feasting and fasting. I'm personally very excited because I get to watch him coach and I get to just do the program that he puts everyone on. I am actually very excited about this September one because September marks my fourth year carniversary. So this is very big and I'm so excited to be leading this month group fasting challenge. This is kind of like my birthday present from Bella and I Aww. really appreciate that Bella. There you have it. Those are Coach Raymond's top five tips to get abs. If you want more of Coach Raymond's guidance, advice, and top tips for carnivore diet, feasting, and fasting, please consider joining the September 30-day challenge or the next 30-day challenge whenever you're viewing this video. It will be linked down below. And as you heard Raymond mention, he will be premiering and starting for the first time ever his feasting and fasting group coaching calls during the month of September. So once you sign up, you will have access to participate in these calls with coach Raymond. Again, meetings are every Tuesday, every Friday, and every Sunday. For more details, please click on the link below. And if you have more questions, feel free to email me or DM me on Instagram. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. See you next time.